All right, you guys take another minute and uh, just finish up the belt work. Right, there's the answers for those. We got some solving equations, maybe some literal equation on number two. There's some percent problems the rest of the way. All right, there's our objective for today. I can find percent increase and decrease. Take about 30 seconds and copy that down, please. Sorry. Each year since the creation of the Federal Reserve System in 1913, the Federal Reserve prints money, causing an inflation of the money supply. As more money is printed and entered into the economy, the value of every dollar decreases by the percent of inflation. Uh, though inflation has been as high as 9.8% in America, the average annual rate of inflation is about 3.2%. If every dollar was worth $1 in 1913, which is when the Federal Reserve was created, how much was each dollar worth in 1914 based on the average annual rate of inflation? Okay, so we can use a percent proportion to solve this one. I, I think we'll do that on this one just because it should make it, uh, it should be pretty easy for one year, but... On the second part, where it's looking at seven years, right, 1920, and we may use a different method just because it's going to make it a little bit faster, okay? So, in the percent proportion, we got uh, 100. Equal, you know, we got the 100 there in the denominator, and we got the percent right there, 3.2%. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to apply the percentage right now, right? So, it's a, a loss of 3.2% in terms of worth, worthfulness of the dollar. So, right, you'd say, well... In 1913, you'd start with 100%, but then it takes away 3.2% right here, like this, okay? So what that means is that uh, after one year, right, would be saying that that dollar would be, I think I did that right, 96.8%. So there is our percent, okay, that we need. Well, how much did it start at? Well, it looks like it started at $1 right there. So at least that was the whole amount or the total amount of the worth of that dollar in 1913. So boom, we'll just put that in there. One dollar, there's a decimal there. And we'll solve this proportion for this unknown value. Now, of course, some of you guys can do that in your head because you got a 100 and then 1.00. But let's say that you want to use fish method anyways. It's not going to matter. Uh, what you're going to end up with is that one dollar is worth now 0.968. That'd be dollars, of course. Uh, but you can't have a point a value of a point. Uh, let me start that over. A thousandths of dollars. But you can't have hundredths of dollars, right? Those are pennies. So we'll, we would round this up, would say, so that one dollar is now worth, instead of one dollar, it will now purchase 97 cents worth of things. Uh, and that was after one year, of course. So... 97 cents is what that dollar is worth now. Or, uh, again, you could just say, well, how much would it purchase? About 97 cents worth of stuff, okay? Now, um, I'm going to do this a little bit differently in the second part just to make this a little bit faster. And it, it does work with these uh, percent changes like this uh, for problems like this, okay? <clears throat> because we know that uh, each year the dollar will lose 3.2% of its value, right? Which means that each year it's just 96.8% of what it was before. So if we start with 1913 value, which was, we'll say this this one, it's $100 right there, right? So let's say uh, you got $100 in 1913, and it would have been worth $100, of course, in 1913. But seven years later, how much will it be worth? Well, uh, you could simply multiply that by that percent, which is uh, 96 0.8%, so 0 0.968. Uh, and that would that would represent one year. Okay, now once you get that product, what would you do with it? Well, you would multiply it by another 96.8%, okay? Uh, so that, of course, we know that's 97 cents, but you'd multiply that by 0.968. And uh, how many times are you going to do this? Well, it's for seven years, so we'll do it seven times. I think I got that right. Seven times? Yeah, we're good. So we're going to multiply $100 by 96.8% seven times because, again, each year depreciates. Now, this, this would be kind of considered compounding, which is fine. Hopefully, we understand that at least a little bit. In the percent proportion, like if we had used a percent proportion for this problem, we could have done it, but we would have had to found it one year and then in the next year and the next year. So I'm just showing this, this little bit of a shortcut. 
Um, mostly because, you know, well, there's, there's several questions that I think take a little bit longer on this, on this uh, classwork. What we can do is we can take that, since it's multiplying the same thing over and over and over, and I know we haven't covered this yet, but um, I'm just gonna do it real quick because I think it'll make this go a little bit faster, okay? So we had 0 0.968, that's the percent that the dollar's worth after each year, and we can take this to the power of seven. And you may be wondering, well, how do I do that on the calculator? Because I can't do that in my head. You can look for this button. It should be about one up and to the left from the button seven. That's the power button. And yeah, we'll, we'll cover that in more detail in that specific unit. So I can do 100 times 0 0.968. I will need the parentheses, by the way, to the power of seven. Well, let's, let's see what that is, 100. Uh, 0 0.968 to the power of 7. And I got that uh, in 1920, that, so that's seven years after, right? We're now saying that that $100 will only purchase $79. And I'm going to round that. I got 64 cents. Now that should raise several questions in your brains because it's like, well, I mean, what does that really mean? Is my $100 now not showing $100 on it? Is he gonna, go sh is he gonna show 79.64? No, the numbers don't change on the, on the bill. Uh, it just means that your $100 bill will now only purchase $79.64, okay? Worth of things uh, if you were to compare that to 1913. Um, it also means that if you take $100 and you like stuff it under the mattress, you know, like Scrooge McDuck, then, um, well, you, you've lost some value on that money, okay? So how about, uh, about how many years will it take for $100 in 1913 to be worth uh, 50 bucks? Uh, I'm gonna skip that one just because, um, just for the sake of time, but just understand it would, to, for this amount of money, for any amount of money, it really worth to be worth half, you'd be looking at uh, anywhere between 20 to 22 years. It's really years, right? There we go. Now, of course, this should raise other questions in your minds. Um, but I don't know that we have time to go over those right now, okay? I mean, you're, you're welcome to ask, but... So that, that's one form of percent of change, right? It changes yearly the same amount like this. And of course, is, it, is inflation always happening at 3.2%? No, like it says, it's been as high as 9.8%. And since 3.2 is the average, it means that some years it's below that as well, okay? All right, each year salmon go up the Columbian River to lay eggs and then swim back down the river. To go up the river, the salmon use fish ladders. But to go down the river, the young salmon must pass through the electrical turbines of eight dams. And uh, I, I actually don't know if this is true, but it's just a math problem for now. Approximately 12% of the salmon are killed as they pass through each turbine. I like salmon, they're very tasty. If there were 1,000 salmons, how many salmons would still be alive after traveling through the first turbine? Well, uh, after one turbine, right? We can use a percent proportion for this one, especially since that's what we're used to. Uh, we do have a percent. Uh, now this is 12% this is killed, right? So again, I'm, I'm gonna use that same strategy that we used on that last problem. Uh, you would start with 100% of the fish, but you'd be taking away 12% of the fish after one pass, right, through these turbines. Uh, so that would be 88% left over. So I'm gonna use that number instead. So I'm, I'm applying the change right now, whereas if you use 12% in this percent proportion, you'd have to apply the change at the end, which is, I don't know that it's so different, but it'd give you the same answer. And yeah, how many salmon were there total? Boom, 1,000 salmon right there. So you got 1,000 salmon. Uh, since that's the total amount, it goes in the denominator. We'll be solving for how many salmon are left over, which is the red X. So fish method, cross multiplication, whichever one you prefer. Uh, yeah, you could use scale factors. This one works out pretty good, actually. You'd multiply that by 10 to get 1,000. So multiply 88 by 10, and then that would tell you after one pass, 880 salmons are left. I don't know the plural for salmon. I don't know if it's just salmon or salmon. Salmons is? 
Yeah, salmonses. <laughs> so how many salmon would be left after traveling through all the turbines? Well, how many are there? Well, there are, let's see if I can find it. I said there was eight, right? Where am I, eight? Um, for each turbine, there it is. Boom, I found it. So eight dams, eight turbines. And uh, again, I'm gonna take a little bit of a shortcut because I don't wanna do the percent proportion eight times on this. So how many salmons did we start out with? We started out with a thousand salmons. And uh, how many salmons are left over after each pass? 88%, I'm changing that to a decimal right there. And then uh, how many dams are there? I said there were eight dams, right? So I can make that to the power of eight just like we saw in that last problem. And again, you, you could use the percent proportion eight times, but I think this is gonna go a little bit faster. 1,000 times 0.88 to the power of eight. And I got 359.6. I'm gonna round this to the nearest salmon. So we'll say, you know, approximately, I guess. Approximately 360 salmons. Salmons is, I don't know. So well, there's our two answers, 360 salmons and 880. Yeah, be careful on these word problems. You know, you're not writing these just as numbers. You need to label them. And yeah, even though I may have spelled salmons is wrong, um, you know, there should be some kind of label. Uh, the reason why we can't use eight times 12 is because the 12% is based on what's left over, right? Mm -hmm. Not always based on the 1,000 salmons that we started with. So that's why you'd say, well, like the first, the first pass, right? That's 880 salmons, okay? Now the second pass would be based on that 880 salmons, okay? Uh, which, is, which is why it's not, it's not adding 12. It's not 12 plus 12 plus 12, you know, eight times. Uh, which means you'd be left with 4%, right? And which also means that if they, there were more dams, you could say, well, then eventually you'd go into the negatives. And I don't know what a negative salmon looks like unless it's over a fire, if you get my drift. You find a pair of shoes that are on sale for 33 bucks, which is 40% of the original price. What was the original price? Okay, um, percent proportion on this, right? There we go, set them 100. Now, the 40%, um, the 40% off the original price, the question we should ask here is, do we know the original price? And this one, we do not know the original price, okay? Which also means that we cannot use the 40% because the values that correspond, the percent that, uh, that we get and the value that we have need to be side by side in the percent proportion like this, right? Uh, and the original price would have been 100% of the price, which means that it goes across from it and we don't know that value, okay? So we can't actually use 40% in the percent proportion. So what do we do? Well, it's 40% off the original price. Do we know what value corresponds with that? Yes, we do, that's the 33 bucks. So in other words, 40% off is the $33, okay? So I can put that in right now. It's, it's part of the original price. But how much of the original price was that? How much of the 100% is that? Well, that would be 100%, but they took off 40%, right? So that ends up being 60%. So we're actually using 60 here instead of 40. Now be careful on these types of problems because a lot of students right here that say either they'd use 40% and they'd accurately place the 33, or, or some students misplace the 33 as well, right there, okay? So again, fish method, cross multiplication, or scale factors, let's see what we get. I, I like to use fish method just because it's kind of quick in the calculator, and I get 55. Now, the answer is not actually 55, okay? Because the answer is $55. Just be careful, it's a, it's a word problem. Make sure you got labels for those. That's one of the big differences on this problem is sometimes you're gonna get the sell price like we did in this problem. Other times they're gonna give you the original price and then ask for the sell price. Um, I guess this one, since it's a discount or percent off, you could, I'm saying sell and sell, which sounds like the same word, but one's S-A-L-E, the other's S-E-L-L. If the current population of Highland City is 75,000 peoples, 
and it increases 2% each year, what will the population be in one year? And also five years from now. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of combine the two uh, methods in this one. So I'm going to use the percent proportion on this one first. Okay, and I, I'm going to keep doing this method where we find the change in the beginning rather than the end. And this one, the 75,000 people, that's all of Highland City. That's the total amount of people. So yeah, that's going to go into the denominator of the second fraction. Well, did they give us a percent? Yes, 2%. Now it's an increase of 2%, right? Which means in one year, there's not going to be 2% of the people. It's going to be 100% of what there was this year and then another 2% for next year, which means next year you would have 102% of the population right now. So I can use 102% in the percent proportion, which again will give me the, the population right away. And uh, yeah, we want to know what that value is. So... Uh, let's take this to the calculator, 75,000 times 102 divided by 100. We got 76,500. Now, as clean as that answer looks, it's not actually the answer because it's a word problem. We've got to label that. Boom. And, of course, that's in one year. Well, what about five years from now? Well... You're going to start with the 75,000 people. And you're going to multiply that by the percentage of change, which is 102%. Of course, I would change that to a decimal in this type of equation. And we're going to do this for five years. So I'm going to take that to the power of five. And I'm just going to put it in the calculator and see what it equals. I mean, could we use the percent proportion? Yeah, we could. But um, five times is still a little bit much for me. So, yeah, and I, I am a lazy math guy, but... Someday you will be too, just with writing, you know what I'm saying? So when I put this in the calculator, I get 82,806, and that is rounded, by the way. And I, I don't recommend using decimals of people. It just seems wrong. <laughs> I've heard students say, well, what if, what if you get like a half a person? I don't know what that looks like. Um... But if you have that in your head, I mean, feel free to use the decimal. I don't know. No, a baby's still a person to me. Um, they're like, well, what if they got their legs chopped off, which is horrendous? It's like, well, they're still a person, like a full person to me. All right, a store buys a skateboard for 75 bucks and marks up the price 40%. How much do they sell the skateboard for? Okay. Well, this one's a percent proportion one. Very nice. Uh, they mark up the price 40%, right? So, uh, you know, they spent 75 bucks on it. I think, you know, you got to make a profit because they're a store. And we're looking at a markup of 40% on this. So that means that they're going to take that 75 bucks and mark it up. Uh, well, $75 would be 100% uh, of the price. They're going to take that and add another 40%, right? Which means the percentage we're looking at is actually 140% of what, the, what it started out as. It's 75 bucks. So I'm going to use 140 as the numerator right here. And then the 75, thank you, is uh, the whole amount of the, or the total amount to, to begin with on this. So that is going to be the denominator of the second fraction right there. We're going to solve for the partial amount, which is, of course, going to be more, and that happens from time to time. Uh, I'll use the percent proportion again. I'm, I'm going to use a uh, fish method, rather. But you can use cross multiplication if you choose. I guess you could use scale factors, but I'm not going to. I got 105 bucks. So $105, boom, okay. Now yesterday the class was like, that seems like it's kind of jacked up. Well, you know, I mean, it's a business, so they got uh, bills to pay as well, you know, like employees and um, light bills. And they got to pay for the electricity and gas to heat up the store, whatever, okay. So number eight, a store buys an aquarium for 75 bucks. They mark up the price 50%. After a few months, they discount the aquarium by 35%. What is the price of the aquarium after being discounted? Well, let's look at the, the first one, which is the markup, okay? So I'm gonna do the markup first, right here. And the markup, start with the markup. I'll, I'll put this down, markup value. Uh, we got this percent proportion. 
and they're going to mark it up 50%, right? So that means we're going to take, you, you would have paid 100% of the price, but we're going to add another 50% on this thing. Okay, so um, the markup would be 150% of what it started at. So I'm going to use that percent in the percent proportion. Uh, and how much was it total? Well, it was 75 bucks. That would have been 100% of the price. We want to know the $150, uh, 150% price on this one. So using the percent proportion, I'm going to use the fish method. 75 times 150 divided by 100. I got 112.5. So uh, the markup would have shown $112.50. Uh, now, this isn't the answer because it says, what is the price of the aquarium after being discounted? So that was just from the markup, okay? Now, when they when they say they're going to take a discount of 35%, you're looking at 35% off the $112.50, okay? So now we're going to find the discounted value. Uh, discount. Discounted. There we go. All right, so another percent proportion. It's 100% there. Uh, but let's look at the percent again. Okay, now it's 35% off. It's discounted 35%, which means you would have paid 100% if you would have paid $112.50. But we're going to take 35% off of that value, which would be 65%. So that's the percentage I'm going to use in the percent proportion. Uh, and what was that value? Well, it was $112.50. So that's the total value right here. What we want to find is the discounted value. Again, see that the 100% the is corresponding left and right with the total. And then the 65%, that's the value we don't know. So those got to be across from each other as well. So let's go back to the calculator. And I'm going to use our fish method again. 11250 times 65 divided by 100. And it gives me a decimal to the thousandths. Uh, but you can't have a thousandth of a dollar. So I'm going to round that up. I got uh, 0 0.125. So, this which this shows me seventy three dollars, and after rounding, I get thirteen cents. Yeah, don't forget to label that. Is it? It is in dollars. So, when determining if uh, a percent of increase or decrease, we use a formula for percent increase or decrease. We call it percent change. Uh, so this is going to be a percent change. which equals, it's going to be this formula right here, okay? Got to multiply that by, this is a fraction, by the way. So you'll always be given two values in this, all right? Original, a new value, uh, sometimes they'll say a starting value and then an ending value, something like that. Sometimes the original, they'll say it has initial value. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for the numerator, we're looking for the big number. It doesn't matter which one's the original or the new. We're just looking for the big number. And we're going to subtract the small number. Whichever the two is biggest or smallest, we're going to put into this formula. And then we're, we'll divide it by whatever the original value is. Original. I think I spelled that right. Um, original. Sometimes, again, they're going to, instead of original, they'll say an initial value or a starting value. Uh, or even sometimes I'll just refer to it in the past, okay? So whatever value was in the beginning, that's the value that we would use as an original on that stuff. Now, in the end, after we um, put this into a fraction, just multiply it by 100, and what that does is it changes it immediately into a uh, percent for you, which means that whatever we get out of this, we would label it as a percent because, of course, the formula shows it is a percent change. So let's go ahead and set it up for number nine here, okay? So it's going to be subtraction multiplied by 100. Uh, and then we can just put this into the calculator. Now, when I use my calculator for the fractional part, I, I'm going to use the N over D button, okay? And I can perform an operation in the numerator if I use that button, okay? So uh, looking at this example, I say the bigger of the two values is the 56, okay? And I don't care if it's the original or the new value. It's just the bigger number. And I look for the smaller number, of course, the by the process of elimination, it should be 34. But we should know by now which of the two is bigger and which of the two is smaller. And then it's already labeled it for us as the original as 34, so I put that in the denominator right here, okay? Now, what this means is that for percent of change, we're always comparing the change to whatever it was in the beginning or the original value. So we don't usually compare percent of change 
based on the um, new value or the ending value. Always look at what it was originally. So yeah, I'm gonna use my calculator to put this in. N over D, 56 minus 34, then I go down to my denominator, 34, then I get out of the fraction, of course, multiply that by 100, boom. Oh, now it gave me 1100 over 17. Just push the double arrow button right above the enter button and that would change it into a decimal. Now I didn't say if we needed to round this to in a specific place, I'm gonna go to the tenths for me. So I'm gonna say this is at 64 point, I got 64.70588235, but that'd just be 64.7 for me. And, and it is a percent, okay? Now as fun as that was, we're not actually done with number nine. Um, because at the top it says, we gotta determine if it's an increase or decrease. I do this at the end, I mean you can do it at the beginning if you'd like. But for me, I see that it went from 34, it went up to 56, which would indicate that it is an increase. Boom, okay. So what about number 10? Okay, number 10 is gonna work the same way. I can use the formula for this one. So I gotta find my change first. And the bigger of the two numbers is the original, that's fine. And we're gonna subtract the smaller of the two numbers, which is 18. And we'll divide it by whatever number we started with, which is showing as 72 there. And yeah, I'm just gonna put this directly into the calculator. So, uh, N over D, 72 minus 18, all over 72, times 100. I got 75. So this is 75%, and then I'll just look to see if it's an increase or decrease. Uh, 72 goes down to 18, so that would be a decrease. And there we go.